What if Lightroom could go completely full screen? No panels, no clutter, just you and your image. Toolbox thinks they've cracked it with their new dynamic panel for Lightroom Classic. But does it actually make editing faster or is it just another shiny feature? I've been testing it on both my laptop and my 39 inch ultra wide monitor and the results are very different. So what exactly is the dynamic panel? In short, it replaces Lightroom Classic static side panels with floating movable panels that appear when you need them and fade away when you don't. Behind the scenes, the software is built for all of Lightroom Classic's tools, exposure, tone, curves, HSL sliders, color grading panels, and even masking refinements. It works with any toolbox console from the wired entry level version to the high end wireless model. And it's completely free to install as long as you have the hardware. It's designed to give you full screen editing and to eliminate wasted space, especially on a single monitor setup or a laptop screen. Toolbox says it's all about freeing up your workflow and keeping you in the creative zone. And that's what I'm gonna be testing today. So let's take a look at the Toolbox Dynamic Panel. Now, if you're familiar with the Toolbox and you've seen my previous videos about it, then that's great. If not, then check out the video linked below about the toolbox this thing i absolutely love it i love it for my lightroom and i really like it for editing video we're in lightroom now and we have this picture of a damselfly that's appearing over this leaf and i've specifically cropped this into a 16 to 9 so that it will fill this monitor now i'm editing on my macbook pro and I'm outputting to a monitor. A lot of people will have this type of setup in their homes for editing their images. So over on the left hand side, you will see that I have my, my panels for my toolbox. We've got the shortcut keys, we've got a list here of all the different shortcut keys so it tells you what keys to press for what function. As you use the toolbox, you get used to the shortcut keys themselves, so you don't necessarily need to show that, but I'm going to show it in this demonstration. When I'm clicking around in the image here, if I go to, let's say, the white balance, you see this new panel pop up down below. And this is our dynamic panel, so I can scroll using the toolbox, which this little... which the middle scroller is really nice for doing stuff like this. And you can hear, I don't know if you can hear it on the video, but it's got haptic feedback and a little sound to say that you turn it all of that is customized you can turn the whole thing off this whole thing is customizable but for this demonstration i'm using it out the box with the standard settings without messing around just to show you how powerful this can be so typically that's how we would use it in the past but now what we can do is if you like full screen editing you want to see your image full screen we can now do that so if we come to window we're going to go to screen mode and we're going to go full screen and hide panels. Now these panels, we can hide these. So if I turn these off, I can even do the turn it off there. Do you want to turn off the general hood? You can turn it off. I don't do that. I generally leave it on. And the same can be done for this one as well. Close the D-pad hood. And what you'll have is just this hood here. So I'm currently on white balance. And what I can do is just adjust my white balance Without sliding those irritating sliders that are in Lightroom, I can just fine tune it as much as I want. We can come down to the temperature, we can adjust that. And if I want to get into anything else, let's say we want to go to the tone, we click on tone, we've got our exposure, we've got contrast, so typically I'll stick on some contrast onto my images, 20, 25, something like that. Highlights, do we have any highlights? We've got a little bit, so I might tone those down a little bit. Shadows, bring them up slightly. Blacks, uh, saturation, obviously I'm gonna boost the saturation just a little bit because I like to boost my saturation in macro shots. HSL, again, we can select our colors. So let's say my greens are too much. I wanna pop the blue, but not the green. So we can come to the greens, we can come down, let's go to saturation, bring it down a little bit, luminance, bring that down just a little bit so that we can make things pop. And that essentially is what the dynamic panel does. It allows you to do full screen editing without having all the distractions of the panels. And these panels will disappear as well, like I said. It's a great little feature 
if you have limited screen space. And again, it's fully customized. So, so if you want the shortcut keys on, like I like to have it on, uh, you can do that. If you want them to disappear, you can do that also. But where it really shines, I think, is with a laptop, because this is where I think the dynamic panel makes the most sense. On a smaller screen, every inch of workspace matters with the regular Lightroom layout. Panels can take up quite a bit of space. The dynamic panel completely removes the clutter, and when I adjust exposure clarity, the panel appears where I need it and then disappears again afterwards. The fact it supports every major editing tool means I can float tone curve adjustments, HSL tweaks, and even mask refinements right where I need them. Pairing this with a Turbox controller feels natural. Your left hand stays on the Turbox console, your right hand is on the mouse, and you can just flow through your edits. Well, let me show you the advantage that you do get with a laptop. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm open my laptop and we're going to turn off this screen. So again, the, uh, the, the panels, we can completely adjust these if you want to. You can finesse them to your needs. And this is where it makes perfect sense because I can't see the details like I could on my 4K screen. I want to zoom in. So let's zoom it in and move it over. And you see how this panel appears and disappears as I, as, as I use it which is great. So we've zoomed in a little bit. And again, I'm using the console for this. I'm not touching the keyboard. And uh, let's say I want to add some detail into here. So we can go with texture. Let's zoom it in a little bit more. We can go with texture. You got your saturation, vibrance and all that, which we've already adjusted. Exposure is perfectly okay. I should have picked an image that's not actually that good, should I? <laughs> well, let's say I want to come now to the blues. And let's say we want to adjust the blue hue. Okay, so you can see that in the eye. We want to adjust the hue of the background blue. You see there? So I'm able to do that. What I want to do is tone down the background a little bit. And let's zoom that out. Okay, so it's, it's all stuff that you can use to improve your workflow. Specifically, if you're on a small screen, you're on a single screened monitor, let's say you've only got, um, let's say a, a 20 inch HD display, it's perfect for that. The performance is smooth, the interface is intrusive, and it definitely helps on a smaller display. If you edit while traveling or in cafes or you're at photo uh, photography events, this could be a genuine workflow boost. The dynamic panel will work in multi-display setups as well. So what I can do here now, I can drag the panel over to my laptop screen. It's actually intrusive, it's already moved it over there. My panels are on this screen here, okay? But I can go full screen on this panel. So let's just do that now quickly. Let's zoom it in. So I'm zoomed in on my details on this screen here, but the panels are over here on the toolbox. So that's another great way of using the dynamic panel. So although the dynamic panel works well in multi-display setups, the main benefit of freeing up single screen workspace is less relevant. My usual layout already fits completely without feeling cramped. Now let's move to my main editing setup, a 39 inch ultra wide monitor. When you go full screen with the dynamic panel, you just get gray bars on the side unless you zoom in. On a monitor this size, I already have enough space to zoom in comfortably while keeping the panels visible. So it doesn't really offer any advantage for my particular setup. That said, it still functions beautifully, and it's just that the main difference is less dynamic for large screen users like myself. Well, let's just bear in mind though, okay? That monitor behind me, the 39 inch ultra wide, that costs 1,500 pound. Not many people can drop that type of money on a panel to edit their work with. So if you are on a smaller panel and you've got limited funds, maybe, the toolbox with their dynamic panel could be something you would like to look at. Let's take a look at the actual software itself. So this is the main panel for the toolbox. And again, you can turn on the hoods here, turn them off. You can customize everything. And I do mean everything. And I'll be honest with you, I've just been using 
the toolbox out of the box. I haven't really customized it much. I have customized it for DaVinci. I love the scroll feature for zooming in and out of my timeline. It's absolutely brilliant. But if you're one of those people that likes to go in there and tinker, you're going to have a lot of fun with the dynamic panel. So we come in here, we're going to change any of these shortcuts. We can add new features. It automatically switches from library to develop. And again, you can create your own. So let's break it down into pros and cons of the Turbox dynamic panel. It's excellent for laptops and smaller screens. You get a clean, minimal interface for distraction-free editing. It works seamlessly with the Turbox controller. It's intrusive with basically zero learning curve. And that's what I was saying before. I haven't really edited it. I'll just use it out of the box. And it supports every major tool within Lightroom Classic. The cons of this, however, is the benefit is limited for ultra-wide or large monitor setups. And while the software is free, you do need a Turbox hardware to use it. Overall, it's clever and well-designed idea so would I use this in my day-to-day -day workflow? Probably not. Now, let me be clear. I use the toolbox every single day. In fact, uh, the other day when I was prepping to do this video, my batteries run flat. I physically couldn't work. I had to go out and get some new batteries in order to work because I love the thing so much. Uh, particularly the uh, the scrolling and the sliding the, and the little dial for zooming in and out. It's absolutely fantastic. For Photoshop work, it's brilliant. Adjusting your brush using the dial rather than a keyboard shortcut is very nice. But the actual dynamic panel itself, I probably wouldn't use in my day-to-day -day workflow because I have an ultra-wide monitor. And again, that is expensive. That thing costs way more than getting yourself the entry-level toolbox to be able to use the software with. But if you edit on a laptop or a smaller monitor, the dynamic panel could really speed up your workflow and give you that full-screen immersive feel toolbox is going for. It's great to see toolbox expanding into the software side of things as well. And this is a promising start. They've already said that they plan to bring the dynamic panel concept to regular Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw and even Capture One in the future. If you've got questions about this setup, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help. Alternatively, you could join my macro community. This is a community of macro creatives that love to share and chat about their work. It's a safe space. There's no spamming. There's no advertising like you would find on Facebook. So if you're interested in a nice safe space where you can talk about macro, talk about your setup, ask for help or just show your images, then the macro community on school is the place for you. I want to thank Turbox for sponsoring this video. And if you've got any questions about the setup, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And again, as always, I'll see you in the next one.